Alrighty, so we're back working on the 328 Ti today. We are in a bit of a different location today though because my buddy Cameron is gonna be helping me install something that I've been needing for a very, very long time. As you guys know, I have never really had a working handbrake. Part of the reason I didn't wanna run a handbrake for the longest time is strictly so I could get used to drifting the car with purely just clutch, gas, and steering because I see far too often people will start out with a handbrake and they just use it every chance they get every corner they'll just handbrake into the corner or every entry is just a handbrake entry and i didn't want to develop those bad habits but today we're finally gonna install one so i went ahead and jumped on drift hq and i picked up this irp hydro handbrake uh, i believe this is their number three model which means that it is a reverse mount so the master cylinder will sit in front of the actual handbrake and we'll pull it towards us like this so along with the handbrake i also have this mounting bracket that i'm going to be using i've actually been sitting on this for a while i think i picked this up from level ride concepts which is a local manufacturer from here in washington i believe but essentially this will just sit around the shifter like that and it'll just bolt to the trans tunnel and we'll have a nice little mounting surface over here for the handbrake all right i didn't feel much but after some prying finding screws up underneath the cup holders underneath ashtray and stuff like that we got this out overall it wasn't too hard if you're doing this it should be fairly easy to figure out the only screw that really tripped us up was the one that was sitting up underneath the hazard but even that one place where the screw goes for that is still really usable we actually didn't end up breaking any plastic surprisingly now our next step we're going to start trimming up some of this uh, carpet just so we can get a nice flat surface to put the bracket on so after trimming back some carpet we're running into our next issue issue which is this bracket is running into the side of the seat so we're thinking we're either gonna have to notch out this bracket or we might be able to rotate the bracket so it doesn't hit the seat, I don't know. Uh, see, that runs into some issues though because we won't get a mounting point over here. And I think over there it'd be a little bit tough. See, and that's actually not bad. So the only thing that I'm worried about is with how long this shifter is, I still have to be able to get it oh my in God. reverse, which actually that's perfect as it's had right there, I think. <laughs> No. <laughs> well, because the thing is, like, mid-drift, I'm not going to be putting in a reverse, right? But do, do first and second really quick. Okay. Um, oh, no, dude. Yeah, see? Oh, no. <laughs> well, what if we move it over? Right ah, here, see, man. but that's tough because it runs straight into the hands. I've run two e-brakes on this side. Uh-huh. But then you're looking at your, your high... Wait, is that... So... It's that short, huh? For fifth? That's fifth. That's not. Okay, hey, you want to switch sides real quick? Because my thing is, like, I wouldn't necessarily mind having it on the passenger side. It's just that my arms are kind of short. And that's like, that feels like a long reach from steering wheel there. But maybe it's not that bad. So that's fifth gear. So, I mean, while I'm driving, like, it's not going to be an issue. Like, there's fourth, third. So, I mean, that wouldn't be terrible. So, like, driving, it's like, whoop, boom. Oop, boom hold up huh oh no ceiling mounted <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh no nah, that's too much fabrication that's i need ridiculous. this done by this weekend <laughs> i was looking and it didn't say on the website that it did come with multiple positions unfortunately there were options but the one option that i was looking for had the option for the pull up style or the pull back but that one was literally the only one that was sold out all right, so I think we've come to a conclusion. I've decided I'm de I'm just gonna stray away from shortening the shifter. I like the shifter the length it is. It's kind of baller, I like it. And it's a nice like grab from the steering wheel over there. So we're gonna end up mounting the hydro on the passenger side, which I know to some people is like a big no-no and people just like hate seeing hydro setups like that. But you kind of just have to deal with the hand you're dealt, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we went to the store, got some hardware, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get the shifter out. I'm hoping that I won't have to get up underneath the car since the selector rod runs right up underneath the shifter. I'm hoping once I get these bolts out, I'll just be able to lift up the shifter a bit and then get the little clip out that holds on the selector rod. And then we can get to drilling all four holes to get the bracket mounted so that we can finally get to putting the hydro on it. All right, so we got this disconnected. Uh, unfortunately, we're, we are gonna have to get up underneath the car at some point because I forgot there's the sandwich plate that sits up underneath. But you can see with this out, we can actually get access to the selector rod right here. So we can just pull off the clip, get the selector rod out of the shifter, boom. And then now we'll be able to get the plate on and then once the bolts go through, we can just tighten the nuts from up above instead of having to spend a lot of time up underneath the car. See, if we would have bought just the four singles, if we would have bought the four singles, this wouldn't have worked right. 
<laughs> You're filming vertically. <laughs> Should I be filming sideways? <laughs> yeah, this is for God, YouTube. Damn it. This ain't for no Instagram reel. Damn it. It's all right. It's okay. This is why we it was can just edit. all laughs anyways. The phone's going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know why it wasn't going on right? I had the fucking nut upside down. I was trying to go through the <laughs> nylon first. For fuck's sake, dude. All right, so we got the plate all bolted on. This thing is solid as shit. So now we're gonna go ahead, start drilling holes for the actual hydro, and then we're gonna try and get the hydro actually mounted up. Alrighty, so hydro's all mounted up. Thing is dummy solid. It's actually in a pretty solid position. But now what we're doing is we're trying to figure out how we're gonna run the hard lines. With the way that I plan on running the hard lines, we're gonna have the lines going up to the engine bay. And thankfully, there were just these two holes right here that had these like just covers on them, and we were just able to pop them out with a screwdriver. We're gonna have a line coming from one of these ports down up underneath through the trans tunnel and it's going to be connected to this front port off the master cylinder so that's going to be the feed line into the hydro and then off of whatever second line up over there we're going to have another line running back up into the engine bay and it's going to connect to this front port on the abs unit so running the line from the master cylinder to the hydro and then from the hydro back up to the abs unit the hydro is going to be in line and it's going to be a super simple setup that's just going to be a single caliper in line setup That'll hopefully work really well. Bro, I gotta say, there's just something that hits different about coming to sit in the E36 and just seeing this Hydro sitting here. Even though it's not hooked up, like, I don't know. It just feels like I've got a whole setup now. But anyways, we're taking a step back from doing the Hydro setup right now while we wait on Cameron's brake guy to get back with us about doing lines and stuff like that. But for the time being, there's a couple things that I need to get done before the drift event. Specifically, I want to do an oil change. I need to change out the spark plugs. And then I also need to do a bolt check on the car before the next event. Uh, my battery is running low on my phone, unfortunately, because it just didn't charge last night for some reason. So I don't know how much I'm going to film, but we're going to try and knock this stuff out really quick. Bro, I just had my fucking corner light fall out again. I don't know if I showed you guys, but I ended up putting in some ambers that uh, Travis gave me a while back. And I swear they were in there really well, but it just fucking flew out. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, thank God. It's still intact. I gotta find a better way to secure these things, because they just, they never want to stay in. All right, so I got all the spark plugs out. Honestly, I'm not very good at diagnosing based on spark plugs. All these look fairly decent, except for this one that has a fair amount of chalkiness on it. Uh, I'm assuming that means that cylinder was running a little bit lean, but regardless, like these were the spark plugs that were in the engine when I got the engine and I haven't changed them since. So I don't know if it's really worth trying to diagnose anything just based on the spark plugs. So regardless, we're gonna be throwing in these NGK spark plugs. Alrighty, so I just got done bolt checking the front of the car. I ended up raising up the front just a tad. I noticed that the passenger side was sitting a bit higher than the driver's side, which would explain why the car was wanting to pull to one side and probably explains why my steering wheel was off center. And then along with that, I also noticed that the coilover on the passenger side, the spring had pretty much like no preload on it. So I ended up matching the preload somewhat roughly to the, the driver's side. So that's all good. All the bolts up front were good too. So that's really good to know. But in the rear, it's a bit of a different story. All right, so I already know that this thing's slinging grease everywhere, but look, this bolt, completely loose. And I imagine some of those other ones are loose too. So we're gonna get that tightened up and then I'm gonna go around and check all the bolts on both axles. And then not only was there a bolt loose on the axle, the muffler hanger was also just about to pop off. So this is the perfect example of why you should always bolt check your car, especially with that axle. That could have been disastrous. Alrighty, so I got the rear end all finished up, got all the axle bolts nice and tight, and then I actually ended up adding a little bit of preload to the rear coilovers, uh, because when I added the shorter springs, I ended up not shortening the shock, so there was literally no preload. Rear end felt super sloppy, not fun to drive in, so I'm hoping this will help out a little bit. I do have some bad news relating to the Hydro, though. Unfortunately, Cameron's brake guy is on vacation until the 23rd which means he's not gonna be able to help us do the flaring, get the fittings and everything to get the plumbing done for the hydro. So I might have a lot of work on my hands tomorrow trying to source everything and figure everything out. I really wanna have it done for the drift event because like it's just sitting there and I'm, I'm gonna feel like a poser showing up to a drift event with a hydro in my car that's just not even hooked up, you know? It just feels odd. I have a lot to figure out tomorrow. I'm hoping I can get it done, but I guess I'll check back in with you guys tomorrow when I start to figure things out. Dude, today has been a letdown 
like a super letdown. I've been running around all day trying to get everything together to finish the plumbing for the hydraulic handbrake. And it's not looking like I'm gonna be able to get it done for the drift vent tomorrow. Therefore, I think I've decided I'm probably not gonna drive tomorrow. Initially, I really just wanted to go to the drift event tomorrow just to be able to try out the handbrake, you know, have fun with the handbrake, because it sounds like I'm going to be the only one out of, like, my immediate friend group that's going to be going. So I was probably going to be by myself anyways, and now that I'm not going to be able to get the handbrake done for the event, I think I'm probably just not going to make it. But yeah, like I said, today's been a fiasco. Initially, I went over to O'Reilly's, and I was able to find... Uh, good enough length of steel brake line uh the fittings fit one of the ports on the actual master cylinder for the handbrake but i still had to find one more fitting so i ended up going over to autozone thankfully autozone actually had the easy bend tubing so i ended up picking up that instead uh, also has the same fittings that fits the outlet for the master cylinder on the hydro but they also didn't have the fitting that i needed for the inlet on the master cylinder. So just, just for a reference, so you guys know what I'm talking about. So this inlet right here, this is a three eighths by something fitting. Uh, like I said, the fittings that came on both of these, like all of these lines, like they will fit this fitting, but I still had to get one fitting for the inlet, which is a seven sixteenths by 20 fitting. And apparently that's a super uncommon size. And literally none of the stores around here carry them. I went to O'Reilly's, I went to AutoZone, I went to Napa, and nowhere has them, which is unfortunate. So I won't be able to get the plumbing done, and I'm just bummed. It sucks. And, like, I'm really trying to get a video out for you guys, so I don't know if, like, this is going to be, like, the video not being able to finish the handbrake. I'm tempted to just put out a video because it's been, I think at the time of recording this, it's been like two weeks since I put up a video. Maybe I'll just wait till I get the handbrake done and then I'll release the video like that because no one wants to end a video like this. That's just not fun. And I was just so, I was so ready for the event tomorrow. Like I already got all of my tires mounted up. I got new tires for the front wheels and like, <sighs> I guess it just wasn't meant to happen. And speaking of how long it's been in between videos, like I'm sorry, content's lacking sometimes, you know? It's just hard for me to find things to keep doing to the car to keep like a consistent upload schedule. Like I'm not much into street drifting, so I can't just like go out and make videos street drifting because that's not like, it's not really my thing. I guess there's little like minor things here and there I can do on the car, but I don't know. I, I tend to find it hard to find a lot of solid content to film for this car, aside from installing parts and going drifting at the track. It's really slow working out here working on drift cars when you're on a budget. One thing I do want to note though, that I was thinking about last night, after changing up the suspension a bit on the car and literally only like adjusting ride height a little bit and adjusting preload, the car feels a million times better. So like here I was at the end of the event, like last event saying like, oh, suspension trash, like I really need to get rid of it. But no, I think after making those adjustments, car feels great. And like, you can tell that the suspension has seen some events but it's still definitely usable. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, don't just jump to installing new parts when something just doesn't feel right, because it really could just be like a little small adjustment that you need to make to things to make it feel good. I don't know, I feel like I'm rambling right now, but I guess tonight I'm gonna hop online, order the fitting that I need, and then we're gonna get this handbrake installed. I'll see you guys in a few days. Alrighty, so it's definitely been way longer than a few days since I filmed that last clip. In that time, got my hair cut, and I actually decided to switch plans on how we're gonna plumb the hydro handbrake. Long story short, it was just being really... It, I was having a really hard time trying to source all the fittings, figure out exactly what lines I needed to run it between the ABS unit and the main master cylinder over to the hydro. So instead, we're gonna do what I think is gonna be much easier and what everyone just tends to do. And we're gonna actually just tee into the actual brake lines underneath the car. So here's roughly the location that I'm gonna be tapping into the lines. Since this is a E36 with ABS, there are actually two lines that go to the rear brakes, one for each side, instead of just having one single line going to both rear brakes. You'll have to excuse the mower in the background. Cameron's actually mowing right now. But anyways, since there are two brake lines going to the rear of the car, we're gonna have to tee those together. So, went ahead and I picked up two of these little T fittings. So essentially how this is gonna work with the T fitting, we're gonna have both lines right here and we're gonna have them tee into both sides of this T right here. And then we'll have a line right here going up to the inlet of the master cylinder on the hydro. And then we'll also back here, put in another T and then the outlet from the hydro will go into this hole and go into both hoses. 
Now, initially when I was trying to do the handbrake, I was having a hell of a time trying to find the fitting for the inlet on the master cylinder for the hydro. Cause that fitting, it's something like a 7 16 by 20 and literally nowhere around here carried them. And even online, like I was gonna have to pay out the ass for just getting one fitting. But thankfully my buddy Travis, the one who actually bought my green 318 IS, he hit me up after I posted on Instagram that I was having issues and he brought this brake line to my attention. I'm not exactly sure what this brake line is from, but on this one end, there's actually 7 16 by 20 threads and that fits perfectly into the inlet of the hydro. And then on the other end is just a standard 3 8 by 20. 24 so I could just use a very common brake line fitting and thread it into there now since the threads actually bottom out on this before the fitting on the end of the hose actually reaches down all the way I'm gonna have to run a crush washer over here but like I said my buddy Travis he's been running this on his drift car and he hasn't had any issues so I'm hoping it's gonna work out good so with the master cylinder back on the actual hydro, you can kind of see what I have going on here. So I have the soft line coming off the inlet, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to run it over into this left hole over here. And then I'll have some of the copper hard line go from this port down into that hole right there. I'm probably not going to film a lot of me like doing the flaring and stuff like that, just because I'm not very proficient at it, nor do I really know how to do it at all. So I'm not going to be very helpful. So I guess I'll check back in with you guys once I get everything routed. Boys. I think I finished it. Of course, I still have to bleed it, but like everything's together now. So as you can see, we have the two lines coming off of the actual hydro going down underneath the car. Now, don't give me shit for my bad tube bending because like this is my first time ever bending brake line. I'm kind of proud of how it turned out, but I'll just show you. So we have the inlet coming from these lines that come up from the front of the car so this one goes up into the master cylinder and then from the outlet comes down up out of the car into these back lines these back lines i think turned out fairly good i tried to keep things like decently tucked up i don't know i think it turned out decent these front ones were obviously my first bends and just kind of turned out really wonky but other than that like it's looking good so yeah, like I said, all we need to do now is bleed the system, and we have a working handbrake. Pump, 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 pump. Dude, not a single air bubble. Really? <laughs> Dude, I told you, it was, it was gravity bleeding really good. Pure fluid. Right off your brake, you're off your brake. Yep. Alright, hit your E. Did it just stop like nothing? <laughs> Dead stop. Dead stop? Dead. Really? Go ahead, rip. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> I heard it. Yeah, dude, put your wheels on. Holy shit. You have e now. Yo, it's time to go. <laughs> All right, so we just got done bleeding. It's time to give this thing its, well, not its first test. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I tested it right before this, but I'll show you that it works. <laughs> Way better than it did the first time. That's awesome. <laughs> and just like that, camera was just saying, I'm officially an e-brake drifter. Of course, I'm not going to be abusing the dr the handbrake because, like, I don't know. I feel like I have enough of the um, muscle memory and like the habits now to where I'm not going to be abusing the handbrake. You know, because what is I went like two years without a handbrake. So this is exciting, man. It's a whole ass drift machine now. Well, shit, guys. That does it. I drove the car home and it's, I, I'm not gonna lie, I had to give it a couple pulls on the way home just cause it just felt right. This thing's officially a drift car. Well, I mean, it's been a drift car, but now it's got the bells and whistles, you know? I'll put links down in the description to all the fittings I use, the lines that I use, the uh, brake hose that I use, handbrake, all the jazz. I'll put it down in the description just in case you guys want to try and replicate this same hydro setup in your car. Um, it was surprisingly a lot easier than I expected. It was just more tedious than anything. Uh, flaring lines is actually super easy, so... Um, I'll actually also put a video down in the description for like a line flaring video for those of you that want to learn about that. I'm just so excited. This thing's going to shred Esprit Peaks on Saturday and it's going to be amazing. But yeah, I think that's going to do for this video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you all have a nice day and I will see you in the next one.